from Tavern on the Green in Central Park, New York. It's the Cube covering Veritas Vision Solution Day. Brought to you by Veritas. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. We're here in the heart of Central Park, a tavern on the green, a beautiful facility. I'm surrounded by Yankee fans, you know, like a fish out of water, but that's okay. It's a great time of the year. We, we love it. We're still in it up in Boston, so we're happy. Uh, Dave Vellante here. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. Nathan Hall is here. He's the field CTO at Pure Storage. Nathan, good to see you. See you too. Thanks for coming on. Thanks. So you guys made some announcements today with Veritas. Uh, what's that all about? Well, it's pretty exciting, and Veritas being the market leader in data protection software, and now our customers are able to take Veritas's net backup software and use it to drive the policy engine of snapshots for our flash arrays. They're also able to take um, Veritas and back up our data hub, which is our new strategy with FlashBlade to really unify all of data analytics onto a single platform. So. Veritas really is the, is the solution net backup that's able to back up all the workloads and Pure is the solution that's able to run all the workloads. So I wonder if I could follow up on that, maybe push you a little bit. A lot of these announcements that you see, we call them Barney deals. You know, I love you, you love me, we go to market together and everything's wonderful. Are we talking about deeper integration than that or is it just kind of press release? Absolutely deeper integration. So you'll see not just you know, how-to guides, white papers, et cetera, but there's actual engineering level uh, integration that's happening here. We're available as an advanced disk target within that backup. Uh, we've integrated into CloudPoint as well. Uh, we've certified all of our hardware platforms with Veritas. So this is deep, deep engineering level integration. Yeah, we're, we're excited about Pure. We've followed you guys since the early days. You know, we saw Scott's De Scott Deason and what he, what he built. Very impressive. Modern architecture. You, you won't be a legacy for 20, 25 years. So, so you got a lot, lot going for you. So it's, it, it, presumably it's easier to integrate with such a, a you know, modern architecture, uh, but now at the same time, you got to integrate with Veritas. It's been around for 25 years. We heard a lot about how they're investing in API-based architectures and microservices and containers and the like. So what is that like in terms of integrating with a 25-year-old company? Well, I think you know, from, from Pure's perspective, we are API first, we're RESTful APIs first. So we've done a ton of integrations across you know, multiple platforms, whether it's Kubernetes, Docker, uh, VMware, et cetera. So we have a lot of experience in terms of how to integrate with various flavors of uh, other infrastructure. And I think Veritas has done a lot of work as well in terms of maturing their API to really be this kind of cloud first type of API, this RESTful API that uh, made our cross integration much easier. Mm. You guys like being first. Uh, you kind of, there were a number of firsts. You guys were kind of the first or one of the first with, with Flash mm -hmm. for block. You were kind of the first for file. Uh, you guys have hit AI pretty hard. Everybody's now doing that. You Absolutely. guys announced the first partnership with NVIDIA. Everybody's now doing that. <laughs> you guys announced giving away NVMe as part of the, st the stack you know, for no upcharge. Everybody's now doing that. So you like to be first. Culturally, you know, you've worked at some other companies. What, 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 what's behind that? Well, culturally, I, this is, I mean, this is the best company I've worked at in terms of culture, period. And really, it all starts with the culture of the company. I think that's why we're, we're first in so many places. And it's not just first in terms of first to market. It's really about first in terms of customer uh, feedback. And if you look at the Gartner Magic Quadrant, um, we're up. We've been the uh, leader's quadrant for five years in a row. But this year, we're indisputably the leader, you know, furthest to the, uh, to the right on the x-axis, furthest north in the y-axis. Um, and that's all driven by uh, just a customer-obsessed culture. Uh, we've got a net promoter score of 86.6, which is stratospheric. It's, uh, it's something that puts us in the top 1% of all business-to-business -business companies, not just tech companies. So it's really that culture about customer obsession that drives us to be first both to market in a lot of cases, but also just first in terms of customer perception of our technology. Hey, you guys were at first at really escape velocity, you know, the billion dollar unicorn status, and now you're kind of having that flywheel effect where you're able to throw off different innovations in different areas. Well, can you talk more about the data hub and the relevance to what you're doing with, with Veritas and, and data protection? Let's unpack that a little bit. Sure, sure. Um, the data hub, you know, there, we had a great keynote this morning with uh, Jothi, the VP of marketing for Veritas, and he, he had an interesting customer tidbit. He had a, some sort of unnamed government agency customer that actually gets penalized when they're unable to retrieve data fast enough. And that's not something that many of our customers have, but they do get penalized in terms of opportunity costs. 
And the reason why is because customers just have their data siloed into all these different split up locations, and that prevents them from being able to get insight out of that data. If you look at uh, AI luminaries like Andrew Ng, or uh, you know, even people like uh, Dominique Brzezinski at, at Apple, they, they all agree that you have to, in order to be successful with your data strategy, you have to unify these data silos. And that's what the Data Hub does. For the first time, we're able to unify everything from data warehousing, to data lakes, to streaming analytics, to AI, and now even backup, all onto a single platform with multi-dimensional performance. That's FlashBlade, and that is our data hub. We think it's revolutionary, and we're challenging the rest of the storage industry to follow suit. Let's make less silos, let's unify the data into a data hub so that our customers can get real actionable information out of their data. Yeah, I was on a crowd chat the other day, you guys put out an open letter to the storage community and, uh, and an open challenge, uh, so that was, that was kind of both yeah, a uh, little controversial, but also some fun. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, um, you know, it's a very important point you're making about sort of putting data at the core. I make an observation. It's not so much true about Facebook anymore because after the whole fake news thing, their market value dropped. But if you look at the top five companies in terms of market value, include Facebook in there. They, they and Berkshire keep doing this. But but let's assume for a second that Facebook's up there. Apple, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and Amazon. Top five in terms of U.S. market value. Now, of course, markets ebb and they flow, but it's no coincidence that those are data companies. They don't sure. have a lot of hard assets at those companies. They've got data at their core. So it's interesting to hear you talk about Data Hub because one of the challenges that we see for traditional companies, call them incumbents, is they have data in stovepipes. And for them to compete, they've got to put, it in a digital world, they've got to put data at their core. So um, it's not just for startups and people doing greenfield. It's for folks that are you know, established and don't want to get disrupted. So, long-winded question, how do they get, let's take, think of a traditional company, an incumbent company, how do they get from point A to point B with the data hub? Well, I think, you know, I think Andrew Ng has a great uh, talk point on this. He basically talks about your data strategy, and you need to think about, as a company, how do you acquire data, and then how do you unify into a single data hub. And it's not just around putting it on a single platform, such as FlashBlade. A, a valuable byproduct of that is if you have all the stovepipe data, though you probably, in terms of your data scientists trying to get access to it, now have to, if they have 10 different stovepipes, you've got 10 different VPs that you have to go talk to in order to get access to that data. So it really starts with stopping the bleeding and starting to have a data strategy around how do we acquire and how do we make certain that we're storing data in the same place and have a single unified data hub in order to maximize the value we're able to get out of that data. You know, when I talk to, um, I'll throw my two cents in, I talk to a lot of chief data officers and, and to me the ones that are most insightful talk about their five imperatives. The first of all is they got to understand how data contributes to monetization. Whether it's saving money or making money, it's not necessarily selling your data. I think a lot of people make that mistake. Oh, I'm going to monetize my data. I mean, I'm going to sell my data. No. Sure. It's all about how it contributes to value. The second is, what are my data sources? And then how do I get access to data sources? And there's a lot implied there in terms of governance and security and, and who has access to that. And then at the same time, how do I skill up my business so that I get the right people who can act on that data? Uh, and then how do I form relationships with the line of business so I can maximize that monetization? And those are, I think, you know, sensible steps that aren't trivial. Yeah. They require a lot of thought and a lot of cultural change. And I would imagine that's what a lot of your customers are going through right now. I, I think they are. And I think, you know, as that IT practitioners out there, I think that we have a duty to get closer to our business and, and be able to kind of educate them around these data strategies, you know, to give them the same level of insight that you're talking about you see in some chief data officers. Um, if I look out at the, there's a recent study on the Fortune 50, the CXOs, and these, these aren't even CIOs. Uh, they're actually, you know, we think as IT practitioners that the cloud is the most disruptive thing that we see, but the CEOs and the CFOs are actually five times more likely to talk about AI and data as being more disruptive to their business. But most of them have no data strategy. Most of them don't know how 
AI works. It's up to us as IT practitioners to educate the business, to say here's what's possible, here's what we have to do in order to maximize the value out of, out of data so that you can get a business advantage out of this. It's, it's incumbent on us as IT leaders. So Nathan, I think again that's really insightful because you know, let's face it, if you're moving at the speed of the CIO, which is what many companies want to do because that's the so-called fat middle and that's where the money is, but you're behind, I mean, the, the, we're moving into a new era, you know, the cloud, the cloud era, you know, no pun intended, is, is here, it's solid, but we're entering that data of machine intelligence uh, and, and sort of, we built the foundation with Hadoop even, of, there's a lot of data, now what do we do with it? We see, and I wonder if you could comment on this, is the innovation engine of the future changing. It used to be Moore's Law. We marched mm -hmm. to the cadence of Moore's Law for years. Now it's data applying machine intelligence and then of course using the cloud for scale. Sure. You know, and attracting startups and innovation, that's fine because we don't want to, we want to program infrastructure, we don't want to deploy infrastructure. So, if you think about Pure, you got data, mm -hmm. for sure, you're going hard after machine intelligence, and, and cloud, if I understand your cloud play, you sell to cloud providers, whether they're on-prem or in the, in the public cloud, but Correct. what do you think about those, that innovation sandwich that I just described, and how do you guys play? Well, cloud is where we get over 30% of our revenue, so we're actually selling to the cloud, cloud service providers, et cetera. Um, for example, one of the biggest cloud service providers out there that I think uh, today's announcement helps them out a lot from a policy uh, perspective, uh, actually used FlashBlade to reduce their SLAs, to reduce their restore time from, I think it was 30 hours down to 38 minutes, and they were paying money before to their customers. So it, what, what we see in our, our cloud strategy is one of empowering cloud providers, uh, but also we think that cloud is increasingly at the infrastructure layer going to be commoditized, and it's going to be about how do we enable multi-cloud? So how do we enable customers to get around data gravity problems? I've got this big, weighty database that I want to see if I can move it up to the cloud, but that takes me forever. So how do we help customers be able to move to one cloud or even exit a cloud to another or, or back to on-prem? So we think there's a lot of value in applying our, for example, deduplication technology, et cetera, to helping customers with those data gravity problems to making a more open world in terms of uh, sharing data to and from the cloud. Great, well, okay, Pure and Veritas getting together, do some hardcore engineering, uh, going to market, uh, solving some, some, some real problems. Thanks, Nathan, for hanging out. This iconic, beautiful uh, tavern on the green in the heart of New York City. Appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Thanks, Dave. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Dave Vellante, we'll be right back right after this short break. You're watching theCUBE from Veritas Solution Days. Hashtag Veritas Vision, be right back. <laughs>